everybody and welcome to another video from the DCGist. In today's video we're going to be looking at 10 DCG board drawing study tips. These tips can be used for any topic or any drawing that you're doing and if you follow the 10 tips it'll just mean that any time you put into DCG study will be maximized to ensure that you get the most learning out of every time you sit down with a drawing board. As always, if you enjoy this video and or if you have any questions drawing it, please uh, leave a comment below and don't forget to press the subscribe button underneath to make sure that you are the first to know about any new videos that we put up on our channel in the future. So our first study tip and probably the most important one is that the best way to learn is to make mistakes. Uh, the questions that you get wrong will teach you more than the questions that you get right. This really is the philosophy on which I base all of my teaching. I make sure that people feel like it's okay to make mistakes. The only way that you'll improve is to learn from the mistakes that you make. So every time something goes wrong, you need to make sure that you learn why you went wrong. And if you do that, you'll learn a lot more than if you were to get every question right every time you do one. The second study tip then is to practice, practice, practice. There's no substitute for doing questions. So there's no way that you can improve at DCG unless you get in front of your drawing board or in front of a sheet of paper and you do questions. There really is absolutely no substitute for it. You can look at notes all day long, you can make notes, but if you don't do questions, it's very difficult to improve. It doesn't matter what questions they are, they can be from the book, they can be past exam questions, they can be mock paper questions, so long as they are questions in DCG that will challenge you and help you to improve. The next study tip then is if you haven't got the time or the equipment to do a question, sketch it instead. It's about understanding, not perfection. So what I mean by that is that you won't always be in the uh, Technographics or DCG room you won't always have your drawing board at home. You might be in study or you might have a free class in school at some stage and you might want to do some, some DCG revision but you feel like you can't because you have, haven't got any of your equipment. There is absolutely no harm and it's actually beneficial to just sketch it instead. Okay, um, You'll still be able to go through all the steps. You'll still have to try to figure it out but it'll just mean that you can uh, do the, the questions without having to have your set squares and your, your T squares and everything and it'll give you the opportunity to do DCG when you mightn't necessarily get to do it otherwise. Also, uh, it's not all about perfection. It is important in that not every drawing has to be done with a T square and a set square and you can get just as much benefit from doing a sketch of a drawing as you can from actually uh, drawing it on a, a drawing board. Tip number four is to use color in your drawings to make the important points clear. Uh, it's like a highlighter for your board drawing. So whenever you do something new in a drawing or if you're doing a drawing that you think there is a particularly important aspect of it when you go back to look at it later, use some color to go over your lines. So you might have some constructions or there might be some heavy lines in your drawing that you think is really important that when you go back to look at it later you might want to really notice that again and if you put in your color what it'll just mean is that it'll be really clear for you when you go back what it was that was difficult about that question or what it was what it is that you think you should uh, look back on study tip number five is to summarize the steps you use to complete a question once you've finished it this will really help you remember the problem solving techniques that you used now, what that means is that once you're finished your, your drawing, you might say, I'm done, I've solved everything I need to solve, I'm gonna put it into my folder. But what would be a really good idea is that once you're finished is to actually write down the steps that you used so that that way you've re you really cement in your mind what you did during that question. And it'll mean that if you ever go back to look at it again, you'll be able to see the problem solving techniques that you used and perhaps you might use those problem solving techniques again when you're doing a different question in the in the future that might be um, similar to one that you're doing now. It also means that in the exam you'll have always kept a note of all your problem solving techniques so before you go into your exam you'll be able to look at a list of the techniques that you use for each problem um, on each topic and you'll have a much clearer idea going into the exam what techniques you may or may not use 
in uh, each one of the sections and in each one of the questions. Number six then is time every question that you do. Try to reduce the time with each question you do in each topic. The target is 35 minutes by the exam. So when you start off your study in September of sixth year and you're going back over questions, it's probably gonna take you a while to do each one of the questions. But what you're trying to do is by the time you get to May or June of sixth year, you want to be able to do comfortably each one of the topics um, in 35 minutes. So if at the end of the question, uh, you've taken 60 minutes, just write it up in the, the top of your, your page, say 60, um, and then next time you do that question or a question on that topic, try to beat that number. So the next time you do it, you might get it down to 57, then you might get down to 45, and down to 35 then eventually. And the, what that, that'll just mean is that you have a target every time you start a question of how quickly you want to do it, and you'll know it's achievable because last time you did a question you were able to do it in the, the time that was at the top. So for example, 57, if you did the next question in 56, you will have reached your target. And hopefully then by the time you get to June, you'll be down to 35 minutes for each one of the questions and you'll be happy going into the exam knowing you're going to be able to finish it. Study tip number seven, it can be really, really beneficial to you if you do it every time you look at a, a new topic or when you're revising one. So it's every time you finish studying a topic, test yourself by trying to explain the topic um, or one of the questions you completed to your parents, siblings, or friends. Nothing challenges your understanding more than trying to teach somebody else. So if you can teach somebody a topic, it means that you have a very good understanding of that, of that topic. And when you show somebody else how to do it, they might ask you questions that you mightn't actually know the answers to. In which case you could go, you could look it up and then you're bettering your understanding over and over again every time you try to explain it. So if you're able to explain it to your parents and then your siblings and your friends, it means you're really, really got exactly what it is that that topic is about. And it means that when you go into the exam, you'll be much better placed to be able to solve problems in that topic. Study tip number eight is that not every question needs to be perfect. Uh, in fact, perfect drawings are almost impossible in 35 minutes um, and your examiner knows this. So trying to strive to, have, strive to have the perfect drawing is great, but it's very difficult for you to do in 35 minutes. And in fact, if you try to make every question absolutely perfect, you're unlikely to ever break the 35 minute barrier. Now, what I would say is, is that for the exam, the marks that you're trying to get is you're trying to get all of the marks for solving the problem and for doing all of the parts of the question. And a millimeter here and a millimeter there is probably not going to make much of a difference to your, to your marks. And also, if you try to make everything absolutely perfect, that means that you might never try to sketch any answers or it might mean that you mightn't take a risk in doing your questions and it'll just mean that it'll put you off doing enough study to be able to do well because you'll feel that you're not able to make it absolutely perfect. So try to get that out of your head and just do DCG questions even if you feel like you might not be doing them right or you feel that you might be a millimeter off here or a millimeter off there. Any drawing that you do will help you to get better at DCG, even the drawings that aren't absolutely perfection. Study tip number nine is the most exam focused study tip, but it's no less important. And it's to be 100% confident with the applied geometry topics. Now, the reason for that is that they are the only topics guaranteed to be on the exam. So in your section C, you're going to have the six applied geometry topics of which you're going to have to do two. And you know what each one of those topics are. So you're gonna have road geometry, you're gonna have uh, roof geometry, you're going to have structural forms, you're going to have uh, dynamic mechanisms, you're going to have assemblies. And whichever two of those that you've done in your class, you need to make sure that that topic is absolutely cemented in your mind and you know everything that you can possibly know about those topics because you know what it'll be in the exam. And for those topics, there's 45 marks going for each, so that's 90 altogether. And that's a big chunk of marks in the exam that you know you're definitely going to get those right topics. And you can really be certain of doing really, really well in those topics if you, if you um, know all of the constructions and all of the problem solving techniques for those topics.
And my final tip then is that there's never only one way to complete a question and to take risks during your revision. So what I mean by that is that every question that you can do in DCG, there is more than one way of doing it. So if you feel like what you're doing mightn't be the correct way of doing something, if you persevere with it in your study, you might find that it actually will work and you will be able to solve the, the questions. A great example of that is that you're able to solve interpenetration of solid questions uh, using only laminar plane constructions. So everything that you're doing in DCG is interconnected and a lot of the constructions that you use in one topic, you can use in another. Um, and it can be a really good challenge to yourself if you try to solve different topics using uh, constructions from topics that you wouldn't generally think could be used for, for those. So there's a challenge for you to have a look at some interpenetration of solved questions and see if you can use the, the laminar plane constructions to try to, to try to solve them. Now you mightn't do it in the exam, but it's a really good exercise to see whether or not you're able to problem solve effectively. And if you can, then it's going to help you tremendously when you come to doing the exam. Just to recap, here is a list of all 10 of the study tips for studying board drawing in DCG. Please feel free to um, write any of them down or to um, take a picture of this page for to put up on your on your wall or put it in your folder to make sure that every time you study you study intelligently and make the most out of every minute that you devote to your DCG study. That brings us to the end of this video looking at 10 tips to help you study DCG board drawing effectively. Please leave a comment with any questions that you have and I will answer them as quickly as I can. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please um, subscribe to the DCGS to be the first to see new videos. Also you can follow the DCGS on Twitter at the DCGS or on Facebook. And of course you can go to the DCGS.com to see all of the um, videos and revision guides on the website. So best of luck with all of your study and your revision and I'll see you later.